Go ahead and call the special council meeting for May 6, 2009 to order. First thing on the, as always, is the termination of the quorum. Amber, could you please read the roll, please? Waker. Here. Olson. Here. Roger. Here. Costello. Here. Adcock. Here. 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 Oh. Lacroix. Here. Martinson. <coughs> Weifenbach. Here. Okrepke. Chapman. We have a quorum. Thank you, everyone. Just please keep in mind tonight is a uh, special city council meeting. Uh, a couple things. First of all, if you have a pager or a cell phone. Uh, we'd ask you to turn that to the silent or the off position or preferably last option is self-destruct mode. And so if you would, uh, we'd prefer that those don't go off. Uh, the other thing to rem remind everyone is since this is a special council meeting, we have one thing on the agenda and that is to receive proposals for the St. Joe Street parking ramp. That is the only thing that we can take up. We cannot add anything to a special council agenda. Uh, the other thing is we will not take any action. We'll be strictly uh, taking proposals and asking questions. We will go ahead and proceed and what I'm going to do is we're going to take the proposals as they were received. The first letter that we received is uh, as far as requesting uh, to give a proposal was from Legacy Land and I believe that's Foursquare. Forefront, Foursquare. I'm always, there's two of those guys. <laughs> Forefront, Foursquare. Foursquare was the Cabela's project, yeah. Uh, and uh, who's going to start us off? Okay. What we will do is we'll allow you about 30 minutes for each. We won't time it, but we will try to keep it to about 30 minutes for each. Uh, preferably about a 15, 20 minute presentation. And then leave about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes for questions and answers. Brian, and what I'll do is as everybody comes up to the podium, I will be asking you to please identify yourself for the record. What do I have to do? And if anybody needs technical help, just wave at us and we'll make sure one of our techs come out and give you a hand. Good evening. My name is Brian Vulcan with Forefront Design. Well, thank you very much for taking the time uh, to honor our request to come in and, and give a proposal for the development of a project on the corner of 6th and St. Joe. Tonight, what I want to do is give some introductions, talk a little bit about our project vision and how it ties together with some other uh, things that we have going on in town, talk about our concept of what we want to uh, do down on the corner of 6th and St. Joe, talk about uh, some new market tax credits. And I know that I've had a chance to, to talk with many of you, I think everybody on the phone. Uh, we, we couldn't get uh, everything scheduled, but uh, these are very, very useful tools, and uh, we want to spend some time talking about that tonight. We want to talk about what we think is the next step, uh, a schedule for our project, uh, some of the advantages that we think we bring to the, uh, to the table, and our commitment. You're going to see a couple sketches tonight, like you see the one there. I, I, I want to tell you that these are conceptual, conceptual design only. They are not the design of the the project, the, the building will look different than this. We wanted just to show something or, or have something that we could do some massing <laughs> diagrams to, to do our initial pro forma work to make sure it works. So I don't want you to think that uh, this would be the final design, but it gives you an idea of, of some of the things that we're proposing. I think I just heard donuts. The general rule of thumb is if your cell phone goes off, we do expect donuts the next day. So. Brian, go ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to in introduce the people I have with me tonight. I, I introduce myself. I'm Brian Volk, of course, with Forefront Design, the, the president. And uh, I also have with me from Legacy Development uh, Company, Mr. Les Kenstead and Norm Drake. And uh, from Canfield's Business Interiors uh, from Sioux Falls also, uh, Mr. Larry Canfield. Uh, that These... These guys make up the, the, um, the, the core of our, our working group. Uh, I have been in um, doing projects uh, with uh, Mr. Canfield for a number of years, and over the last several years, we've been trying to find a better way to deliver projects, something that's uh, quicker, uh, less expensive, and, and meets the, 
the client's needs better. And, and, and Larry and I have been doing that and working through that process for, for a number of years. And uh, about six months ago, when, um, uh, when we started looking at the, the possibility of doing something on the corner of Six and St. Joe, when it, it looked like uh, nothing was going to happen down there, uh, Larry said, you know, we ought to look at applying new tax credits. And I've got a couple other developer friends here in Sioux Falls that have had a lot of success. And they've done a number of projects applying different tax credits. And we should see if it will work on this project. So uh, we started talking about six, maybe seven months ago. We engaged uh, some other experts in uh, the new market tax credits and found that, indeed, this site does qualify for the new market tax credits. The next thing we had to do was put together a, a viable story because the new market tax credits aren't just given out. They're very, very competitive, and you have to give a compelling economic development story and a story about social development. And we made that argument, have campaigned for about the last three months, and we've caught their attention, and they think we have a very, very good project, and we want to present that to you tonight. Something that's central to our proposal is that we have tenant owners lined up before we start the project. And I'm pleased to, to announce, or not to announce, but to tell you that we think that we've reached that critical mass of people that are committed to, to being tenant and owners in our facility. These are reputable firms, longtime firms from Rapid City that have shown interest and want to be in this building. And that makes a huge difference on your pro forma. Rather than build something and hope that they will come and hope that you can lease it out, that, that almost always leads uh, to doom. If you have it leased up or preoccupied before you go in, in there, you're much better off. Uh, we have, and I'm not going to say their names because until we go forward and work <coughs> some more, I, I don't want to, to bring them into the mix, but we do have a very a significant local law firm, a local brokerage company that wants to have space in there, a food and banquet facility, uh, a marketing firm, and a couple others, at least two other uh, medical uh, type businesses have shown interest. So that's very important uh, to us and it, it makes it possible. And once we got the requisite number of people, uh, we thought we could move forward on this project. What we want to do tonight is share our business plan with you and then at the end gain approval for a feasibility study. Now I know that you won't make a final decision tonight, but getting going on a feasibility study in partnership with the city is very important. We can't do anything more until we have a meaningful dialogue with the city staff under your direction that we can really roll up our sleeves and work through the details of what we're proposing. We've taken it as far as we can without those discussions. And we wanted to do it this way. We wanted to bring a proposal in front of the city council. Before we started trying to work deals with people in the back room and all that, we wanted to put it out to you so that we have full transparency in what we're doing. And we want to work with the city staff and keep the city um, uh, leaders all uh, completely informed. But we need to do that feasibility study. Now, I'll, I'll say that it, that feasibility study is, is rather expensive. We're going to spend about $50,000 doing it. We're not going to ask for any, any fee from the, the city to do that. We're going to pay the city's part of that. But before we do that, we want to make sure that you're on board, that you're at least going to go through that process with us. Let me talk just a little bit about why we think this is important. I know that you're trying to solve a, a parking problem, and that is an important problem. Parking is central to the, the further development of our downtown. But what we're proposing goes way beyond the parking issue, and it really talks about the long-term viability and economic development for our downtown, and it is extremely important. As you know, the downtown I feel is, is the soul of any community. One of our number one issues here in the community to develop as a community is, is attracting and retaining the proper workforce. We need to be able to do that. Those workers that we want to bring in, those high paying jobs, they demand the downtown amenities that they find in other locations in bigger cities. There was a study done uh, uh, through the School of Mines that they went out and they asked, uh, a number, and I think it was mechanical engineers, would you come back to Rapid City and under what conditions? And they got an overwhelming response that said, 
yes, we want to come back to Rapid City. Two conditions. One is that we have meaningful work and a comparable pay. So they have to have a comparable job. And the second thing is we want some of the amenities that we have now. They define those amenities almost every time. And it's the same thing that Roger Brooks told us. And we heard this from the Battelle Corporation and others. They want shopping, dining, and working. They want activity. They want vibrancy in a downtown. I think Brooks said it, that you need to have entertainment, shopping, and dining in a pedestrian-friendly environment. Those are the amenities that people are looking for. And the only place in the Black Hills that has any real chance of giving that urban environment is our downtown. So it's vitally important to attracting those workforce, that workforce. We need these professionals to come. It has huge military implications. When we went through the BRAC uh, a few years ago, I, I was fortunate enough to be the chairman of the committee that, that put together our BRAC response. Remember, we did that big thing over at the Civic Center, and we brought the BRAC commissioners in. And after they toured around Ellsworth and, and everything, we knew the number one thing that we had to do is prove the military viability of Ellsworth Air Force Base. But second to that, there was all these other things they wanted to know about. And they wanted to <clears throat> know what type of amenities or what type of living conditions they could provide for the service members. And when we coordinated with the BRAC commissioners and brought them into Rapid City, they asked one thing. We want to see your downtown. We want to see your downtown because we want to see how it measures up for the quality of life that we want for our service members. So we brought them around downtown, and you remember we had a big parade and stuff. So I think it has huge implications for the, the, the military as well, not to mention the, the tourism. If you read the Roger Brooks study, you know, we have four and a half million visitors come to the Black Hills every year, and, then about, and they go out to these um, uh, sites like Mount Rushmore and whatnot, and then at 5 o'clock we roll up the sidewalks where 70% of all their spending is done after 5 p.m. And they, and they, again, they ask for the same thing those workers ask for. They want shopping and dining and entertainment in a pedestrian-friendly environment, and that's where we can give it to them. Now, I'm going to show you how this, our project, adds to all of that. But bringing those workers also has an impact on the development of our technology corridor and the workers that we want to do as part of the underground mine. It, we have to take a long-term view of our downtown development. And if we don't do that and, and put projects like this in place, we are, we are not going to achieve what we need to achieve. It's significant because one of the options that you have is just to go take uh, some of the money you have set aside and go over there and build a parking ramp and, and be done with it on one of the most prominent, most significant intersections in our downtown. I think that would be a travesty. We need to put something that's iconic on that corner. But it has to be appropriate. And that's, that's what we want to talk to you. Enough on my soapbox about downtown. I'm, I know I'm preaching to the choir. So our, what's our concept? Well, our concept is uh, to produce a mixed-use facility through a public and private partnership. And I'm going to talk about some of the, the project attributes of, of that in the coming slides. But what do we mean by a mixed-use facility? I guess we, we got this thing built up here. i got to click through this. Well, first of all, we need to do a parking structure. This has to be, con that parking has to be controlled and the benefit has to come back to the city. We know that. We plan on putting in commercial office space. Uh, we have, actually we have some more than 40,000 square feet committed already and a number of others pending. We are, we're planning on putting about 40,000 square feet uh, per floor. So we're looking at about between two and a half and maybe three floors of commercial office space over there. In addition, we're going to do somewhere between 15 and 30,000 square feet of Main Street access for retail space, that where we can put new shops and maybe small restaurants and different things. And lastly, we're going to, uh, we, we have a commitment from someone that wants to do a convention and banquet facility to fit three to 400 people in that facility. That's a very important number. We don't have that here in Rapid City. We got. I've been told we got things for 150 or less and things that are much bigger, but that, that's a niche that needs to be filled. So it's a real mixed-use facility. Now, uh, some of the questions that are asked, will the, the parking, will the city own their parking? And the answer is yes. That's going to happen through this public and private partnership. Uh, uh, I can answer questions about how many parking spots and different things, but at the end of the day, the city is going to have a significant larger number of parking spots, at least double, 
to what they have now, in addition to the parking that may be provided through lease from the city for the other people in the building. That's a very significant uh, thing, and it's going to come at a very low cost to the city. So public and private partnership, what are, what are we talking about here? Make sure we get all these up. We're going to, we're going to, the private entity is going to be formed to own the building. The occupants will proportionally hold shares. The city, this is a public-private partnership. You will be one of those owners of the proportional share of the building, including the parking. <coughs> the city will can control the parking ramp and all the parking that's in it. We believe that, that our interests are aligned. What benefits the citizens of Rapid City, and, but it also benefits the larger Black Hills region. And I think all partners in this are going to benefit from the tax programs that, that we're going to talk about. Through all this, I, I, I've been showing some pictures of, uh, of different uh, uh, projects that my firm has done, but we also have some in here that this development group has done in Sioux Falls that they've been involved in. I think you can see the Sharapa. This is a downtown Sioux Falls project. Uh, these fellows were a part of that development team. They weren't the developer, but they were part of bringing that all together and bringing those partners together. That's the type of things that they've been doing, in addition to a lot of other really cool downtown development in, in Sioux Falls. And I, I could let you ask them some of their projects, but we have a few more. So let's talk about our, uh, the attributes of this project. This is going to be developer-led, just like you would any other project. Say you, if you're going to develop a, a, a housing area and you're going to build a street, the developer leads it. He, he goes through and follows all the rules and, and, and everything else. Uh, we are going to do a design bid process uh, for the public portion. We know that we have to, and Jason, I'm sure you, it makes you happy, any public portion, the parking, is going to follow a, a, uh, a bid process. So uh, we're, we're not going to go over that. But we're going to use an integrated project delivery process for the private aspects of the project. That reduces the cost, it eliminates waste, and improves the project schedules. It's a very integrated, streamlined process, but it, it brings the project, um, gets it done quicker, and it um, is less expensive. We're going to do a green building. We believe very strongly that we need to develop a sustainable community. This could be the catalyst for a, a sustainable neighborhood in downtown. I would love to see the entire downtown Rapid City be green or sustainable. There's so many benefits. We're going to target a lead gold. We don't know if we can get there until we start rolling up our sleeves, but that's where we're starting out. So it's going to be a sustainable building. Uh, we're going to uh, leverage um, uh, the tax credits. Uh, and I'm going to talk about those in a minute. I, I, we skipped over one thing here. It's also going to be historically appropriate. You all know. Uh, my firm's commitment to historic preservation and how important it is for downtown. This building is going to be historically appropriate and, uh, and fit in with the downtown. And we've done some wonderful things. We did a project in Cripple Creek, uh, Colorado. We went, won several design awards. When you drive by, you don't know you're driving by a parking ramp. You think you're driving by several old buildings. Uh, I had a picture of it in here earlier, and we can refer back to it if you want. But it is going to be historically appropriate. Now, let's talk about the, the tax incentives we plan on employing. Uh, the first one is new market tax credits. And I've got a couple slides. I'm going to talk about that, so I'm just going to skip over it for now. Uh, there's also energy efficiency tax credits that, because we do a sustainable project that we can bring to bear here. And they're getting more lucrative under this last stimulus bill, by the way. We are going to utilize the TIF that's in place. That, that is part of the, the tax incentive. And we're going to do something where we do cost segmentation. Uh, that is much, not so much benefit to the city itself, but much more benefit to the developers because we can segment the cost that goes into long-term amortization versus fast write-off. And, and what we're trying to do is improve shareholder value for those people that are investors in this building. Well, let's talk about the new market tax credits here. Let's see if you can get all of these in here. Brian, just give you an update. You're about halfway through your time. 
And I'm about more than halfway done. Very good. So we're, we're doing good. All right, let's, let's talk about the new market tax credits for a minute. This is a program that was first passed in, in 2000. What it does, it authorizes 39% tax credit for, for qualifying developments so that they spur on development and improvements in certain economically depressed areas. This particular site qualifies for this, and I about fell off my chair when I, I learned that it does, but it does. Uh, they were used widely on the coast, and for a number of years, nothing was being done in the Midwest until a number of Midwest legislators or uh, the senators uh, kind of got clued into it, and they said, you know, why aren't these being used? So they, they forced some of these to be used in the mid part of the country, and that's to our benefit. Uh, they're administered um, uh, through a, an organization called a CDE, a Community Development uh, entity that that they actually form they they put a mission together they got charters and different things and they go out and get allocations and they're the ones that control how these are actually passed down to projects once the CDE gets an allocation then they they have to uh, find a qualifying project and it's very important that their projects score high on their scale because if they don't they won't get an allocation next time so we believe, and we've done enough analysis and got enough expert opinion, we have a, not only a qualifying project, but we have a super project, exactly what they want us to do, because we can tell a story of economic development for not only the downtown, but the entire region. And it does exactly what we want it to do. Uh, these projects that you're, you see there, there's a couple more projects done by Legacy Development. Uh, the top one, I think, is a, a rendering of the, their latest building in uh, the Falls development. Uh, they, They've got two buildings built, the third one's under construction, and the fourth one's going to uh, have a groundbreaking this summer uh, in that development area along the falls uh, that my partners here are, are leading. And then the, the one next to it there is a historic, that's a historic crane building. It's a warehouse that they converted into a loft apartments, office, and retail in Sioux Falls. Just want to give you an indication of the experience level of this team in doing this type of development. All right, the, what the new market tax credits, let's talk just a little bit more about what they're going to do. On this project, they're going to bring in 15 to $25 million of allocation. We think we're going to get somewhere in between there. There again, these are competitive. We have to go, go out and get them, but we need to get the participation of all the partners. What it does, it brings in untapped private capital from outside Rapid City, <clears throat> significant capital to, to bring it in to develop this project. Some that's basically found money. Uh, we think the 6th and St. Joe project is not only on its own merit right there, but it's going to be the catalyst for more projects and additional new market tax credit allocations. Because one of the most important things you have to do is you have to get a good project, you have to demonstrate success, and then they're much more willing to give you another allocation if you can show a, a, a bigger vision, and I think that's what we're trying to do. We have to show a successful project in a united front. It allows us to tell the Rapid City story beyond here about our downtown development, the new jobs that we plan to bring. We believe that we're going to bring the numbers upward of 200 new jobs to downtown Rapid City that would not be here otherwise if it was not for the construction of this project. That's very important. Uh, it's going to increase the economic activity. You can see what, you know, the, it has benefits for the underground lab. We think there's going to be uh, spin-off growth for technology-related companies, tourism, all those things that we think are going to bring be good impacts um, to the region. And, and we, can, we can do that because we believe the economy's uh, rebounding. And uh, with the uh, stimulus package, this program was doubled in size, size in a stroke of a pen this year. So uh, the, the tax credits are there. They're there for this purpose, exactly what we need them to do, and it benefits us greatly. All right, let's talk about what we have to do next. Well, the first thing we have to do is gain approval from the city to go forward on a feasibility study. We need your commitment that you're going to work with us to do this expensive fe feasibility study and go forward. If we, we can't get that commitment, we're just going to be stalled. And... Um, and I know you have a couple other presentations tonight, and, and I'm looking forward to hearing from them and, and see what ideas they have. 
but any of us, none of us want to go forward if we don't have the, the commit from, commitment from the city to do this. Uh, we think we've got a, a good plan. We, we think we have a good um, a business model, and uh, we'd like our chance to do that, to, to move forward with the city. But once we complete that feasibility study, um, uh, which is going to include programming, that's where we put exactly who's going to be in there and, and how much space you're going to take. We're going to do a solid budget. We're going to do uh, concept designs, do a complete financial performance so everybody knows the cost and benefits, including the city. We put together the final schedule and the financing plan. Because what we plan to do is we're, we're not only going to uh, design and build this, we're also going to finance it. We're not going to ask the, I mean, conceivably we could ask, uh, you may decide you want to do bonding or something, but we plan on, on financing this all and then getting reimbursed. Uh, through the TIF and other things. So, so that, that's our general concept. But we have to put that financing plan in place, and we don't know exactly what that is until we get to the end of the feasibility study. Now, we're going to use the new market tax credits in that feasibility study, but we're also going to do it without them because otherwise we wouldn't have a baseline to know what the real benefits are going to be. So we're going to see it both ways. Once we get that done, then we're going to present that feasibility study to the city and our other private investors, and we make a decision to go or not go. And this is, uh, that's, a, that's a very important time. And then at that point, we do design development where we fig final the design requirements. We get to a 35% design. Still haven't turned the spade of dirt. We're going to get a guaranteed maximum price from our contractors. We're going to update the schedule and budgets, and then we're going to execute the project, uh, complete the design, construction, and move in. This is our tentative schedule. We, if we get the city to approve the study and we put May 15th, I, I don't know if it's going to happen by then. I, I hope that you move out smartly on it. Um, first thing we have to do is go get an allocation for new market tax credits. Now, we've done much of the groundwork to make this happen. These new market tax credits is not for the faint of heart, nor is it for the novice that has just learned about it and is just trying to figure out what they are. You need to have people that are experienced, that have done projects and you have to bring in the experts. And, and we have done that and we put together a package. But the first thing that we have to do is we have to go out and get that allocation because we are in competition with many other projects right here in western South Dakota. They've never been used before. But if we don't go out and, and wrap up this allocation, we're going to lose the opportunity for another year and lose the possibility of a couple million dollars that could come back into the city coffers. And I, I think that'd be a travesty. Uh, we uh, will put together uh, the tenant schedule to regal. Okay, that's a bullet these guys slipped in on me. Kind of surprised me. Thanks. Um, uh, now, anyway, we'll address all these these different things. Well, oh, I I know what it's. I'm sorry, you didn't slip that in. I had a, a brain cramp there. We need to move out smartly. Not only get the new market tax credits, but a couple of our tenants have to be out of their their buildings. Uh, in short order, and we have to keep this thing moving in, so, moving on, so they can get into the, the project. If we delay this a number of months, the project is is going to be put at risk. We know that you have a need for additional parking. We need to get that done as soon as we can. We need to move out on that. And if we don't use this TIF, it's going to go away. I mean, if we got a TIF in place, we ought to use it. All right. We think it's going to take about 90 days to complete the feasibility study, uh, and then once we get that done and make our decision to do the project development execution. That's 18 to 22 months. We think we're going to complete this project in the second and third quarter or third quarter of 2011. Well, I'm, I've, I've kind of come to the end. I just want to kind of wrap up and tell you, I think, some of the advantages of working with our group. One of the things that we didn't do is we didn't throw out a completed design to you because we can't do that until we have meaningful input with you as one of the significant um, stakeholders. We know these new market tax credits. We got a great deal of experience in it. We're not novice at it. This whole project is business plan driven. We understand the city and regional's vision. We think we have a, uh, the makings of a superior public and private partnership. <coughs> we have a well-developed project delivery process. 
We have established tenants who are going to live in this, are, are going to occupy this building and be there for many, many years. And we have an experienced development team. We think those are huge advantages to this. In summary, what are we going to deliver? This is our promise. Our promise is to provide you a financially and environmentally sustainable building. This facility has to be well suited. The human beings who occupy it has to be historically appropriate. We think the project supports the uh, redevelopment efforts of the downtown, what we're trying to do in, uh, with uh, Destination Rapid City and many other initiatives in the entire Black Hills region. That's the end of my presentation. Yep. I Very open good. it up for your questions. We'll take questions for about 10 minutes, and what I'm going to do is, at this point, we're going to be uh, limit uh, the questions as far as number of questions at each council person, because I don't want one council person asking 10 minutes worth of questions. So if you just ask uh, your questions as, as uh, simply and, and as succinctly as possible. Let's go to Alderwoman Deb Hadcock. Um, just a couple of things. Maybe Jason can answer this. On using the going green yes. tax credits or the um federal money which would be the new market tax credits do they have to follow the state or federal laws for that because i know he was saying something about the city process but if you're using that on the it building must. part it, jason i i don't know that the new market tax credits themselves would require compliance with the bid law but other aspects of the project certainly would um that's really a federal tax question that i'm not able to answer for you and how about the tiff if they're using the TIF, they'd have to follow the project. The whole project would have to follow that bid process from the city, wouldn't it? Actually, only the portion that is funded with TIF dollars has to be competitively bid. Okay. Okay, but if they ended up financing in the end and wanting to pay back with that uh, TIF money, they'd finance it th themselves and come back with TIF money. Wouldn't that still have to follow the process? Jason. Typically, the developer funds the, the improvements identified in the TIF, and those are the only things that can be reimbursed to the developer. So those are the only things that have to be competitively bid. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Please turn on your light. Let's go to Alderman Sam Quaker. Thank you, Mayor. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, Brian, uh, for the benefit of, of the council and those watching, can you explain what lead gold Yes, you talked about well, a green building. Then first I of all, sustainable design is, is, is a way to um, improve the, the positive environmental conditions of, of a facility or an environment, um, and, it, and it discourages the, the bad ones. Okay, that's sustainable design in a nutshell. What, but when you say sustainable design, that, that's an inch deep and a mile wide. What the U.S. Green Building Council has done is they've put in place a, a rating system, and it's called LEED, L-E-E-D. It's Leadership in Environmental and Energy Design. It's a metric to measure how green you're actually doing. There's, there's a lot of greenwashing going on, and so that's what it is. It, it's, a, it's a measuring stick. Uh, it's, it's become the standard. The state requires it's on all their buildings. I, I assume gold is the highest standard? No, uh, platinum <coughs> is. Platinum, so it's close uh, to that. Okay, Alderman Quaker, you got a second question? So talk about gold and platinum, I'd like to learn. Well, there, there's four levels. There's certified, there's silver, there's gold, and there's platinum. Each one achieves a higher, higher uh, environmentally uh, uh, sustainable standard. Um, silver is required by the state and the federal government at a minimum. Uh, I would love to see the city require that in all their buildings, and I, I think we talked about that at the Green Cities Conference quite a bit. It's just a higher level. It it requires, you know, more more energy and air quality and sustainable practices. A lot of different things. Yeah, thank, thank you. Any other more. questions? I'm gonna I'm gonna go to other people, Sam, because I I told everybody we'd only ask one or two questions. If no one else turns on their light, we'll come back to you. Otherwise, we're gonna burn, burn up all the time. Anyone else have any questions? So to Alderman Lloyd Lacroix. Thank you, Mayor. My question is is to Brian about, you know, you said you'd need a the approval to move forward by the 15th and it just seems kind of unrealistic to just coming forward now to be able to approve all this in a short period of time it seems unrealistic to me but I mean uh, well Brian? first of all do we have to have it by the 15th no would that be optimum yes 
what I want to say is if we debate this and goes on for months and months, we're going to lose the opportunity to go out and get these new market tax credits. And, and uh, Lloyd, I, I know it, you know, our proposal, this is the first time that we brought the proposal in front of you, but understand a couple things. Number one, we've been working on this for several months. We've got it to the point where we think we have a good plan. We can't go any farther without meaningful dialogue from the city. And this is not a new project. This thing has been debated and bantered back and forth, the whole concept, for a number of years. So we'd like to get it as fast as we can. Yeah, Thank anything you. Anything else, Lloyd? No. Additional lights, please. I'll ask if I see anyone else who wishes to speak before Alderman Quaker and Hadcock speak for a second time. Please join your light. I just want to make sure everybody has the opportunity to ask questions. If not, let's go back to Alderman Quaker. I'm disappointed with the format, Mayor. I, I, well, really am. I, I think these are important questions that need to be asked in an open forum. Well, Sam, and I agree, with, like yeah, but we, we will have plenty of opportunity to ask additional questions. My goal is to give every single council member equal time up here, and I don't want to have one council person asking 10 minutes worth of questions and then having not a, allowing anyone else to have the opportunity. So please state your question. My question is, uh, Brian, uh, uh, is there any of the analysis that's been done previously that would be transferable to this project? Any of the environmental, um, historical, or site analysis that would be usable for well, this? Well, absolutely, Sam. The, the, one of the first things we do is we go through a, a data collection uh, process. Now, uh, if the city has done that and they're public documents, obviously we will use them, assess them to see if it has to be uh, redone. If it was done by the previous private developer, he paid for that. I, I, I don't know that it would be good for him to go and ask them to give us some of their work product. We may have to do it over again. But we are going to perform all the appropriate environmental studies, historical studies. We're going to follow it to the book because it doesn't do any good to try and get around that stuff. Just do it and do it right the first time. Yeah. So yes, I think so. Yeah. And yeah. one final question. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Um, so. Brian, you first approached the city about, was it six months ago uh, on this on this project? Approached the mayor's office or who? No, no, uh, we didn't. It, it has only been very recently that we actually came, we got to the point as, as a, the designer and the developer that we felt that we had a viable project and we could make this work because it does nobody any good for us to come and talk to the city if we don't think we have a viable project. And the process we used, I think, was the right one. We, we asked for an audience with the mayor and we asked his advice. We told him what our project was about and, and he thought it had merit. And he said, the first thing I want you to do is come and speak to the council. And hence, and that was just a couple weeks, you know, whenever we sent the letter, I think just before that, we, we sent our letter, asked, we want to get in front of the council so that we can, we can get out there and actually start rolling up our sleeves and working through the details with your staff. Okay. Because it, it just it wasn't until just a few days ago that letters went out to other firms, and I just want to make sure that whatever time has been allowed for for your research and your study is also allotted to uh, other other projects as well. Because I want to make sure that it's not a foregone conclusion that we're the city is going to 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 go with with one firm over over another. So I'd just like to have a fair make sure we have a a fair a fair process. Yep, thank you. Let's go to Alderwoman Deb Hadcock. So in order to make this project go, you need the TIF, the 2.8 for the parking from the 2012, the new market tax credits and the private investment. And those are all elements that should be considered in the feasibility study. One or more of them could drop out. I'll give you an example. Um, uh, Norm did a project recently where he found that it wasn't appropriate to use the new market tax credits and it was in a better to, to attract some private investment that uh, th then use the new market tax credit. We don't know what we don't know until we get in there and put this all together. Those are all possibilities. Through our analysis to this point, we believe we can each use each of those elements. Are they all essential? We can't say that at this time, and, and nobody can until we get in and have meaningful dialogue about how this could come together and know what the playing field's like. I guess as a council person, um, it would be like kind of doing RFPs, but it would not be do doing it with just you guys. It would be doing it with other people that if they use the TIF, the 2.8, got the new market tax credits and private investment. I mean, I guess for feasibility, let's talk about if there's three projects. Um, 
it would be hard for me to just say, okay, you guys are the one unless somebody has that proof that they have the new market tax credits. I mean, it, it's like any business, isn't it? That whoever has the best amount or the cash flow that's going that's gonna make this feasible for the, for the city, that that's the project we'd pick. Um, so in this case, it's hard to say that that would be um, your project in this case. It would be um, based on anybody's feasibility study, wouldn't it? Well, uh, there's some truth to what you say, but, but here's the real facts. And I, I don't know what my competitor, I'm sure they get good proposals. I can't talk to theirs, I can only talk to mine. But I know that we're gonna spend a great deal of money. This is not just you know something that we do for, for fun. We're gonna spend well over $50,000. We don't want to spend that if we don't have the full participation and the commitment from the city that they're going to see it through. And I'm, I'm sure nobody would want to do that either. And the other part of it is much of, at least some of what I told you and what I've shared with others in the last few days is, is oh. proprietary. It, it is, you know, we spend a lot of good uh, uh, intellectual capital putting this together. This is not something that, you know, we, that we're just going to, you know, go down the road with no reasonable assurance that at least we're going to get a fair shake. And when you put that type of effort into a competitive environment, it, it makes it unfair for everybody. I think what you have to do is look at the project on its merit and ask yourself, what's the risk of going through this feasibility study and giving a good effort with this firm or that firm? But I, and, I, and, and, and I think that is consistent with the, the program when this first started. That's, that's how this first started. You picked one firm to go forward with. I know you went forward and it, it, it didn't work out for whatever reason. And, and I would see that you would use the same process to go forward again with a different idea. Do you have any follow-up? I, I, I can't remember if we gave them any money for their feasibility study or anything back then, but it doesn't seem like we did. And no. why would we treat this this time any different, I guess, is where I'm going. We're not asking for the any main money. thing is, is Brian, it's hard for me to just pick something on a business plan. I, I'd like to see the business plan and, and where you're going with it. I'd like to see three other business plans and then go from there. It's hard to say that I'd pick yours by the 15th, but I, don't get me wrong, I think what you've done is a lot of work and, it, and it's a good project. And it looks like, you know, what you're using and what you're doing is very viable, but, um, just to tell you that um, to make it a good business plan, it, it, it's it got to be feasible for everybody and everybody gets that chance. Okay. We're going to, no. Nope. Nope. Oh, um, okay. Any last questions from the council that has not had the opportunity to speak? Let's go to Alderman Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I still, I, I got to admit my displeasure with the forum tonight. I think that I, I, I took time out of my day to, and these people took a lot of time out of their day. We're talking about a lot of money here and a, and a lot of work by these people and, and just giving them the opportunity as the questions arise to ask questions. It's important for the council to understand if we're gonna sign off on something and go forward with a feasibility study and those types of things that these guys are gonna spend thousands of dollars on and millions. I just, I think that having allocating a little bit more time, I don't think it's gonna hurt anybody's feelings tonight. Uh, and I appreciate you bringing forward your project, Brian, and I, and I understand that the viability of your project just by looking at it. I think that um, the one thing that has come to my attention most recently is this has just been thrown upon us within the last week or so, Brian. To, and to be fair, like you had mentioned in feasibility studies, there's other people who had, who want to bring forward a project. And, uh, and I know that time is of the essence and I understand. Um, unfortunately, I missed the meeting last night with you to understand more about the new market tax credits. I will get myself up to speed on that. and. Uh, I think making a timely decision is important. Um, also understanding that we need to allow some time for some other, some other people who are interested who didn't, just got notified as of last week, it's gonna be tough for them to, to bring forward such a comprehensive project and, and working through those things. With that being said, uh, one, of the, one of the things that really intrigued me about your, your, your site, your, your project, Brian, was the owner occupied part of that, of that project and is that, in a percentage, how much of this project would be owner occupied? Brian? Just roughly, I'm not gonna hold S it. At least 65%. 65% of the project will be owner occupied? Yeah. Okay. Taking out the uh, parking ramp, but the, the right, commercial okay, space. Right, okay, I understand, yeah. And uh, uh, 
some of the businesses that are going to be locating here, are they, are they from Rapid City? Will there be other businesses that will be owner occupied that are going to move to Rapid City and maybe move some of their business here? All the businesses that we've identified so far are Rapid City firms that would not be for this building, would probably otherwise uh, not occupy downtown. They'd be okay. spread out. I know in one case, because this one business is going to be able to move here, that is going to free up space for another firm to bring between 70 and 100 new jobs to town. I don't. I can't talk. That's all I know right. about okay. it. So I. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to hold you to all that. I'm just trying to get a, my arms around it to just start to be able to congregate some more questions. So mm -hmm. thank you, Brian, and thank you for your presentation. Okay. Any additional questions? Not very good. Everyone, just so you know, the format. There's been a couple questions about the format. The format was to give everybody the opportunity to present. And then at the end, we can ask questions. We need to be a little bit uh, careful in the fact that we start firing all these questions immediately afterwards, and then we, we basically drag out the meeting. And I think it's only appropriate to give everybody the opportunity to give their presentation, followed by uh, a few minutes of questions, and then we can open it up for full debate so we can ask the questions freely of everyone, unless someone has an, uh, another uh, concern or if they have a, another suggestion how we do the format. That is certainly the call of the committee. Let's go to Alderman Sam Quaker. Thank you, Mayor. Based on the discussion that we had last week uh, was that there, there was, we were going to hear one or two proposals uh, tonight. We were going to uh, make sure that others had an opportunity because there was a press release that went out last week and then also at, at my request or our request, a, a letter that went out to the original four uh, applicants of the of the Rushmont TIF, and so I don't think we'll be able to hear all of the proposals uh, tonight. And uh, I think the it's reasonable for the council to make a commitment to hold another uh, meeting or series of meetings to hear the additional projects as well. Okay, thank you. Any additional? Not. Let's go to the second person who had submitted a request to propose, and that would be. Hanny Shaffey and Dream Designs. Yep, we're probably going to take just a few minutes. It's going to take a few minutes for them to reset. Yep, we can take a quick break. Mr. Shaffey, you ready to move forward? <laughs> And there again, Hannah, if you would identify yourself for the record. Yes, sir. G good evening, um, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. My name is Hanny Shaffey, President of Dream Design International, located in 528 Kansas City Street, Rapid City. Uh, I thank you for allowing me to come before you and uh, to do this presentation, uh, which is for uh, a response to an RFP that just happened recently. And I believe we have done this in the past, and I just want to get you an update of where we are at and where we can go and what are the possibilities and if ours uh, uh, suits your needs then we proceed forward according to a plan that satisfies both <coughs> all parties involved. The, in, uh, I believe in late 2006 the city put up put out an RFP to do a downtown revitalization process a project to uh, accomplish certain goals and those goals still are really uh, the main goals that we should be shooting for of course our proposal was and still is a public private partnership between us and the city The goals of the downtown revitalization RFP that was put out in 2006 were to number one, which is the main goal, is to attract a new residential uses downtown. Because you know, I don't know how many of you uh, drive and uh, or visit Chicago. I lived there for a while. The Board of Trade is at the end of La Salle Street, and uh, which is one of the busiest, probably commodity trading facilities in the world. And next to it, a lot of other trading facilities. They're buzzing with people. And I tell you what, during rush hour, you could hardly walk because the sidewalks are full with people. 
You come in at 7 o'clock at night, there's hardly, wa hardly anybody walking that part of downtown. On the other hand, you go up north on Michigan Avenue, just cross the river, cross the <laughs> Walker Drive, you see a lot of people hanging around, a lot of people walking the streets, a lot of people dining in the restaurants, even though across the river, restaurants are empty. And the reason for that is across the river, on the north side of Walker Drive, there are a lot of condos and a lot of residential places downtown, in that part of downtown. That's what kept that part of that downtown revitalized and humming at night. Attracting commercial activities into downtown. Of course, you have more residential uses, you're going to have a lot more needs, regardless if it is a pharmacy, a gift shop, uh, a UPS store, uh, vice versa. All those needs, even a dry cleaner, <laughs> you know, those needs are going to be accompanying the residential uses. Commercial attracts some commercial, but not to the extent that residential attracts commercial. Providing additional downtown street, off-street parking. Of course, we all know you folks are working hard to achieve a parking plan that will satisfy the needs of the downtown folks. And I know it's very hard for you. I stood before you and discussed some of my ideas on it. And I know my ideas may or may not be adequate or may, may, or not, be, uh, may not satisfy others because everybody has his own. And I know they're not perfect. Increasing the activities of commercial uses downtown, and we discussed how that relates to residential. The proposal that we had before you before included, you know, a multi-use facility that provided and satisfied the goals that were put before us as a community by the downtown revitalization and by you folks as council members and leaders of the community. In this project, we had basically retail at the ground level. Behind it, there is parking. The parking proposal that we did is to provide double the existing parking that the city has and provide all the parking needs for the building. Ownership of that parking, we never specify where it is. We could have it either private, public partnership, in which the city could own the, twice the parking lot that is there, and then the private sector or the building owns the rest of it. We never finalized that. We spent a lot of time and a lot of money putting this together, and there were a lot of tasks to get to where we're at today. To go through some of the dates that we had gone through, <coughs> the initial project presentation we did to the city was December 21st, 2006. The city wanted to attract others to submit proposals or additional proposals, so it was extended again to January 23rd, 2006. The City Downtown Revitalization Committee has awarded and approved our proposal, or accepted our proposal February 1st, 2006, 2007, sorry. As soon as we got that, we hit the ground running. We thought, my gosh, this is really something that our community needs. And this is something that will really make our downtown a downtown that we could all be proud of. In February 9th, we did schematic and we got some ideas to discuss with the historical preservation, which is a major component of down, our downtown. Of course, our downtown is full with historical buildings and we have to really do whatever is best to preserve their integrity and enhance their existence and their statue. It does not mean we have to do the exact replica of those buildings, but we have to do something that will enhance them and will make them stay for a long, long time to go. We have to be proud of our generations. Our buildings have to complement what is, what is there and have to reflect our current generation. The mayor and the uh, mayor approved the uh, plans for the downtown park construction on February 20th. We applied for a TIF, which in our presentation we proposed the TIF. We applied for the TIF March 3rd, 2007. The council approved the TIF, uh, I believe in May 7th. I'm jumping to the bottom because I, I really hate to go through the rest of them, except where I'm going to go back to the architect. We met all again with the historical preservation. 
we got through the historical preservation and we actually contacted the state historical preservation and that's where we stole. Throughout the process, we went and actually solicited the best in the nation, if not the best in the world, to work with us on this project. We hired some specialists that specialize in downtown revitalization and historical preservation and urban renewal in downtown. They are the leaders in the, in the sustained building and the energy efficient buildings all over the world. They, do, they practice in that field from Dubai to Kuala Lumpur to Los Angeles to Denver and to Chicago. What, what did we accomplish? We spent about two years in the design and work together with the city in good faith. We performed the environmental assessment, which is a major component because we really wanted, wanted to know what's in there. Incidentally, that, you know, that environmental assessment was utilized by the city to do partial cleanup on that site. We also worked with the city council and the TIF committee and the planning commission to create a tax increment district as per the project plan that we submitted before you in 2006. And then we did a, com a complete preliminary design to really see how can we build this from the antenna towers at KOTA and how that conflict from working with, or actually the initial discussions with Quest because of their radio tower on top of their building and uh, working out with all the other various agencies. We actually conducted forums, public forums. We met with various citizen groups, including the Historical Preservation, the Downtown Association, and the Rotary, Rushmore Rotary Club. We did obtain the Historical Preservation approval as I mentioned before. We also worked with our structural engineers or our stru structural, and engine structural designers and engineers to really come up with a building that satisfies and meets the goals from providing the parking, you know, providing housing downtown, and then also providing the office and the retail that could be utilized by those residential users. users. What did the project have in concept or in, in its content? We actually had about 500 parking stalls. I forgot the exact number. I think it was 485 in the final layout. Approximately 124,000 of residential space. Our goal was not to create too much commercial to compete with the existing commercial. Our goal was to actually bring in residential so it will attract more commercial downtown. And we, of course, we have office space, about 48,000. Incidentally, some of you are going to ask, my gosh, how much of that was committed? Tell you what, all the retail space and all the office space was committed, except for 5,000 square feet I wanted to keep for expansion. The companies were, that were going to utilize the space were actually local companies moving or expanding their facilities, except for one company, which I was going to start, which is in a, in a partnership with a company out of California related to the en ener energy industry. That was going to take approximately 10,000 square feet of that space. Building costs, and incidentally, on the residential, we had actually approximately 30%, and I could give you the list if you wish, 30% of the condominiums that were designed in that building or laid out were actually to be committed as soon as we have an agreement, final agreement with the city. The cost of the project, the initial cost, which, you know, changed a little bit since this, approximately $48 million. We anticipated to be putting in approximately $35 million cash as investors, okay? The developers will be funding the TIF, which is approximately $9 million as part of the, uh, the parking. There will be other components of the TIF for the environmental cleanup and for the relocation of the power line and burying underground to clean up our downtown and make it more attractive. 2012 had a fund of $2.8 million was, uh, that was allocated for the project. We also, in our plan that we presented to the city at the time we presented our first proposal. We had approximately $700,000 related to the addition to the parking fees, not on the existing parking lot that is there, no. Parking fees on the additional parking stalls or parking spaces that were created by this structure. That revenue, we thought we could bond or borrow money about approximately $700,000. 
total cost for the project approximately $48 million at that time. What cost did we spend so far? You know, or how, what did we do so far? We actually spent over $300,000 on this project so far as private, you know, uh, money. One of it is basically the structure and parking layout. And uh, that's approximately what you see, 90, almost 97,000. Completed the historical preservation study, and you're more than welcome to, I think, I believe the city has copies of that. That's approximately 76,000. We did the environmental assessment. We completed the site preliminary survey, which is boundary survey, just to make sure that the building fits on the site. And then we completed a site planning, you know, which is basically where the traffic is going to go and where it is going to come so it does not conflict with Fifth Street. And then we, of course, created the tax increment district, and we conducted at that time a markets analysis, and I'll be more than happy to share it with you, for the, both the commercial and the residential, and how it is going to impact the existing commercial downtown, and how does it interact with the rest of the residential portion of our community. The status of the TIF 62, and I believe I talked to you about it before, in 2009, Tax increment district 62 will generate approximately $69,000. In 2010, that number will jump to approximately $130,000. The $130,000 is actually what is currently given to us by the Director of Equalization's office. The number, when it adds in the current structures that are being built, will jump to approximately $200,000. When the project, as we propose it, will be complete, it will generate in taxes $800,000 a year, okay? This is taxes that we don't have as a community today, okay? Current funding sources for the parking lot, you know, the two, as I mentioned before, in 2011, the TIF will have $200,000 without any additional structures being built. The TIF flow, that will generate approximately a TIF loan of $4 million. Add that to the $2.8 million plus the $700,000, that will give you approximately $7.5 million in available funds that can be utilized for a, a parking structure without even any additional uh, structures. That's not our goal as a community. It's not to build additional parking lot without having to attract businesses into the downtown and attract people to live downtown. You know, with all the environmental issues, we need to encourage people to live downtown. Less travel, less pollution, you know, more walking, healthy people, you know, you know all, all of us believe in that, and I think we should push for that. By the way, that seven and a half million buck, uh, dollars gives you, gives you approximately a little over 300 parking spaces that can be built. The building that we proposed really is consistent with the historical downtown. When we did the historical study, we studied the geometrics of the downtown. We worked with the best to come up with those ideas. The downtown is divided into blocks. Those blocks are 25 foot wide. If you notice downtown, the buildings are approximately that way. Some of them are twi two blocks, some of them are one block, I mean one lot, and some of them are two lots. And that's what the building reflects. The building height, it's approximately 17 story at that time. The size could be adjusted to reflect the needs of the market. Because currently, I, if, I tell you what, if you ask me to do it today, I'll tell you I gotta do a market analysis before I step into it, because that will dictate how much I can build. I don't wanna jump in head first. Why did we reach, I mean, why, you're gonna say, well, my gosh, you had your chance on this. Why didn't you uh, go ahead with that? Well, the first task, and I think I'm gonna to go to uh, that sheet, but apparently it doesn't wanna go back yet. The uh, first task after we got the approval from the city, we met with the city officials. And our goal there is actually, I still had the agenda. Our goal there is to define the agreements and the legal documents that need to be drafted. And I don't think it was even a week after we were awarded the project. 
Those agreements included design build, how do we transfer the land, how do we maintain the parking lot, and how do we uh, uh, do the TIF. And those were the specific guidelines and the specific items that we wanted to discuss and wanted to follow on with. We proceeded in good faith in the design, and we did what we had to do to get to, the pro to where we're at today. Unfortunately, the agreements were not drafted, and they were not being done in a timely manner. That re resulted in where we're spending money, and towards the end, the design-build concept, which is what we proposed, and you're going to say, well, why design-build? It's not allowed by the state. It is allowed by the state. If you look at the statute 518-26 all the way to 55, it all addresses the design build. And I have a copy of it, and you're more than welcome to it. It all addresses how do you do design build and how that can be done within the state of South Dakota. That state statute is, is specific in how it can be done. And I was hoping that we could do it in such a way where it will satisfy the city and us. You're going to say, well, why design build, not design bid build? Well, the Civic Center is a good example of what happens in a design bid build. The budgets were a certain number. By the time we got done with the project, it was triple the number. It's an excellent project. I think the designers did a great job, the way it looks and the way it serves our community. But it did far exceed the budgeted cost. <coughs> $35 million if I took the cost of the Civic Center and I prorated the cost that were final costs for that project, $35 million budget would have been a $100 million budget, $100 million cost by the time we get done. I could not afford to do that. Yes, I can afford $35 million and $45 million probably I could do that, but not $100 million. Having a designer work in a vacuum without having to work with a contractor coordinating what is really practical, what is buildable and what is not, what can be done in a manner that is more cost effective than what the designer could do. We as designers, we try to try for the best, but sometimes the best is not really the best looking and the most expensive. Sometimes the best is the most practical, most practical, most practical, sorry, and serving the needs or the goals of the project. And that's what we wanted to define, define the goals, get with the contractor, get with the designer, and get them together to design a project that meets our goals. You know, that's what we could not reach as far as agreements with the city, and that's where the process broke down. After all the investment that we've done, we actually backed out of the project, you know, hoping that someday the city will change its mind and come back and say, okay, well, this is really, this means sense, makes sense. And you know the economy as it is, it's really in bad shape. Let's do something that is really going to boost up our economy. We actually discussed doing, you know, the first half of the project where we could do design, bid, build, where the parking components, which are funded by the TIF, do it as the city wants to do. But that is really scary. I really advise the city, you know, to start looking at the facilities that they're building and try to do the design build process instead of the process that we follow today. It does not really eliminate good designers. It does not eliminate good contractors. No, it does prevent you know, over designing. It does prevent the inclusion of inexperienced people in projects that they don't have any business doing business on it. You know, and that's where I say, if you want to get to a heart doctor, if you have a heart problem, you're going to see a heart doctor. You're not going to see a foot doctor. I'm a structural engineer. I, you know, by trade, I designed the Omaha Plaza, you know, which is downtown. It used to be a dump site, and it was in the floodplain. We designed it, and it has an underground parking, and it's a beautiful building as part of our community. Actually, we did the civil and the structural. As a matter of fact, we did a 3D model for that project when 3D model computer software was very limited, and that was like about 10 years ago. We did the uh, university physicians structural building, which is infill in downtown. Remember the 
South Town Mall that was being flooded, and we did that. We coordinated with the neighbors, and it fits very well. It's been a very good asset for our community. Those are the type of projects that we've done. Am I experienced enough to design a building like the one that you see on the screen? No, I'm not. I have to recreate the wheel. It will cost me probably twice as much to do it myself as a designer than having to hire somebody who does it every day. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm a five-story, six-story building. I'm not a 17-story building. I'm not a multi-use facility building. I'm not a historical preservation guy. You know, I mean, as far as designing, you know, don't take me wrong. I believe in historical preservation. I, I want to enhance it as much as I could. You know, so that's, that's what we would like to do. If the city wishes to negotiate with us as far as doing the project, we'll be more than happy to do it. Still, the size might change. It might be eight story by the time we're done, we're done because of the market. It might be 10, might be six. As far as the, uh, if the city chooses somebody else, we would like to be compensated for some of the information that could be utilized by others to proceed with a different project. You know, a project downtown that does not provide residential, in my opinion, I, my, and I could be wrong, you know, I don't know everything. It's not going to satisfy our needs for revitalizing downtown. I thank you for your time, and I'm open for any questions you may have. Thank you. Very good. Questions, please turn on your lights. Any questions, please? Let's go to Alderman Sam Quaker. Thank you, Mayor. Are there any other presentations on that are being asked? To, okay, all right, uh, Mr. Shaffey, uh, a couple of questions for you, uh, and it, it may this may be an unfair question given the fact that you haven't seen what the other proposals are, but in terms of value, how much of the work that you've done uh, would be uh, transferable to any project, Mr. Shaffey? As I mentioned before, the project is not all me or Dream Design or Heavy. The project is the Rapid City project. And I'll turn it over every single document that we have to whoever the city chooses to do if uh, we're not selected. As far as the cost, the ones, the items that I really would like to recover are basically the environmental assessment, the creation of the TIF, because we really spent a lot of time and effort on that, the historical preservation study, and I got a big booklet, and I tell you what, the city should utilize that booklet for a lot of information that we utilize in our downtown. You know, and that, those are the three, uh, the three components. The surveying for the site is only $715. It's negligible. You know, the, I'm sure the a new, the new tenant, a new person may have to do their own survey. Let's go to Alderman What's, what's the quicker. sum of those three items, approximately? I don't, I don't really know. It might be about uh, between 100 to $180,000. Okay. And, and my understanding that one of the reasons that, the pro that uh, you stopped the project was because um, you needed to bid the entire, the entire project. Did I understand that right? Or were you, were you also able to, to bid only, um, have, have to bid only the city's portion? Mr. Chappie. And then, Sam, I think we'll ask that probably the city attorney also when we're done with it. It was brought up actually as an idea, and I don't remember who brought it up, to bid the city's portion and then leave the rest. Unfortunately, the lower levels or the main level has got a lot of retail in front of the parking lot, and a lot of the lobbies for the offices and for the uh, apartments would be in conjunction with the parking lot. Did you want to, you know, and leave it as you did you want to get a comment from Jason Green or you? I want to move on, Sam. Well, it, it, sound, it sounds to me like your project was more integrated. It was the pieces were more intertwined, and so it wasn't possible to to do separate bits. Is that right, Jason? Let's go to Jason Green, our city attorney. I I don't know that it wasn't possible. It was certainly is certainly a requirement to competitively bid projects through that are funded through TIF dollars, and this was definitely going to be funded. We discussed some other alternatives with Mr. Shaffey that. Um, might have made the uh, the process a little more viable for him um, for good reasons he wasn't interested in those. The only other thing I'll say is that it's not just my opinion that design build is inappropriate in a TIF project, it's also the opinion of the South Dakota Department of Legislative Audit. Now, the previous proposal, was it design build also was the proposal or was it that we just heard tonight, was that proposal? Jason. 
what I understood from Mr. Vulcan was that they would bid that out in accordance with the requirements of state law, not design build. And I see Mr. Vulcan nodding. Okay. So the other, the other thing, Mr. Shappy, this is my final question, Mayor. The, the, the other thing is you indicated that uh, you had trouble working through the agreements to do, to, there was four, three or four agreements that you needed to have from the city. Did you come to the, to the, the, to the city council to ask, I mean, did you come to the, the city and ask for assistance in that and were you turned down and how were you turned down? I Trying actually, understand. Mr. Shaffey. Uh, yes, we did actually, I believe in August of uh, 2008, we came to the city and asked to uh, ask them to direct staff to draft the agreements and I, I believe the city did that and that's where we uh, started working in more details with Mr. with the city attorney's office and uh, that's where we got to uh, where the uh, uh, agreements were not workable for both parties. Okay. Yep. Anything else Mr. Quaker? Just to follow up I guess where we ran into the snag was as we started the process of trying to uh, put the agreements together is when the issues came up as far as the requirement to bid. And so we were in the process of moving forward with those agreements. We just couldn't finalize them because of that. Uh, additional comments or questions? Let's go to Alderman Ron Kroger. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Hanny, I, I appreciate you. Uh, given the time schedule that you put up on, on the screen to see how long this project here is, or your project had been in, in the works. And I appreciate uh, letting us be, or having you tell us exactly more or less what cost you in, invoked it, uh, at present. And I, I guess, you know, there's a couple other things there is, is I know you were beat up really badly for months regarding the Rushmont Park project and you repeat up really badly about the TIF. And in one hand, I feel really bad about that and, uh, and that the project kind of went on the wayside. And I guess my question to you would be, uh, well, first of all, to Jason Mayor, if I might. Yep, go ahead. The please. city can do design build. It just cannot be, we just cannot use TIF funds to do that, correct? Go to Jason Green, City Attorney. Yes, there, there's some things that we'd have to do, we'd have to get in place in it before we could do a design build. They're currently not, um, we're not set up to do it, but it's statutorily possible, yes. And if I may, Mayor, another question to, to Jason is, Hanny's design would not allow uh, the parking lot to be, to be bid jointly uh, and then a design build on the rest of it. He couldn't do that on his original design. Jason? Well, I, I think it, it's legally possible to do that from a practical standpoint. It may have been very difficult because of the layout of the building. I think you would have had um, some work that would have had to have been done initially that would have benefited both the, the parking ramp and the rest of the structure. And breaking out those costs, I think, would have, would have presented a pretty good challenge. So uh, I guess in the last, exactly tell, tell me one more time where it fell apart. What could not be done? Jason? I believe that it fell apart where the requirement to comply with the bidding procedures, the competitive bidding procedures that the city use couldn't be compromised. And the city can't compromise that because it's a requirement that's imposed by state law. And from a practical standpoint, I believe Mr. Shaffey felt that he couldn't make the project work if that was the limitation he had to work within. Go ahead, Ron. Did you want to ask? I, I, I guess I, I would like to have Hanny comment on that. And then my other question to you, Hanny, would be your proposal that you have tonight, would you be able to break that out so it could be bid as the previous project was? Mr. Shaffey. What I would like to propose is actually the parking lot and the areas surrounding the parking lot at those same elevations or the same levels as the parking lot, you know, to have those as design bed, design build, okay, design build by the city. You know, the city is in charge of the whole process. They could interview the designer, they could interview the uh, contractor. Once that is done, and we'll fund it, once that is done, then we start our, the rest of our project and that rest of the project could be either negotiated 
with the same builder and the same designer that the city hired for the first phase, okay, or designed and uh, and negotiated with a different person, depending on who is more qualified and who is capable of doing it. I don't want to be in charge of the parking lot, folks. I don't want to design the parking lot or build it. No, I want the city to be in charge of that, but we'll fund it, you know. And then above that, will will the private portion of it will be coming up. Okay, Ron, you start okay. before. If I may, Mayor, one <laughs> one question. You, Handy, you had your design up there or the picture of the building, and basically it was what four four levels of parking. Two levels would be basically city, and then two for the building. Is is that what you had? It, it, we actually. So, ahead, so, I, so I guess my question is, you're saying then that you would uh the city could you would you'd be willing to go along with the four stories of parking to build it that way and then your other section whatever would be design built is that what you're saying Henny? what what i'm saying is actually you know that the lower levels where the parking is all those levels with the fronting up uh, you know, condos or retail or uh, office space. Right. That will be design bed, design build. Okay, design build. Uh, when I underline design build, and that could be administered and controlled and managed by the city, following the state statute. And the city could interview a contractor and a consultant and whatever, a team to do it in accordance with statutes 5, 18, 26, all the way to 25. And then after the city is, and we'll fund that as long as we're involved in the decision making because we're not going to have a gold plated parking lot as long as we're sitting in the <laughs> review because we had partnership and then after that after that is complete we'll either negotiate as developers with the same contractor and design group or interview somebody else who might do better for the rest of the project you know and at the time we do ours we're going to follow the state statute with the design build similar to what the city did and okay. the lower levels. Thank you. I'm going to go to Jason Green, the city attorney. Thank you, Mayor. The city can do a design build to build its own project. We can't do a design build to build something for a private party. And under the arrangement that was contemplated, the building would have been um, condominiumized. So there would have been separate ownership interests in the parking levels and the rest of the building. So Mr. Shafi's proposal would essentially have the, the city design building and con doing construction administration for privately owned property and that would not comply with state statute. Okay, uh, let's go to Alderwoman Deb Hadcock. I guess that's where it's going. So n knowing this today, Hanny, and this concept, basically what they're saying on the parking, anything to do with parking lot and city funds with TIFs and the 2.8, you're not gonna be able to use with design build, but the rest of building you can. And that's where you came in kind of a delay because that didn't work okay so what if you had to do it different because what people the other group is doing is a little bit different um, it, it's not working that way Hanny so what we're trying to say to you is are you going to come back with a proposal that's going to be something that's feasible um, so you can submit a plan and have a feasibility study because at this point it sounds like what you're trying to do still is not going to work Mr. Chef if the city stresses the idea of the, uh, having to bid the parking lot as long as all the details for the architectural for the retail and for the office space is controlled by us not by the city you know what i mean as design to design it because i really don't want to have you know that component to be you know all of a sudden it's about 10 times as much as it should be because we're, we're importing tire important uh, importing uh, uh, tiles from Italy instead of Turkey where I could buy it for 10 percent of what I could buy it in Italy <laughs> you know what I mean so those are the kind of things that I really hate to see happen to the private component of that portion on the lower levels so if, if the city wishes to do that we'll be more than happy to work with the city and evaluate options so my question is um, are, are you making this a feasible thing to come back because at this point it sounds like the, the bigger building and the things that you're doing now is not coming back are you going to, are you saying you're going to submit another plan um for the next step of this is that why you're here tonight i'm here tonight actually for two reasons i'm sorry mayor oh, go ahead please yeah uh, uh two reasons one is actually to make sure that we're following the same 
revitalization goals that we want because I do business downtown. I basically have probably one of the major downtown, you know, real estate, you know, that I own downtown. You know, we own almost a whole half a block uh, near the site. Uh, and I want to make sure that we're doing justice to the downtown. That's number one. Number two is actually to make sure that I am actually, w w not me, uh, our group is still interested in doing the project if we could find ways to really do it because I really do believe in the project and I think it is a good uh, asset to the community. Number three, if we're not selected, I would like, really like to be reimbursed for some of the costs for the tasks that can be utilized by whoever is going to be selected. Thank you, Henny. I appreciate those Thank uh, you. answers. Okay. Additional questions, comments? Additional questions or comments? Let's go to Alderman Sam Quaker. You indicated that you had uh, apparently, apparently you have a legal opinion that uh, I don't know from your counsel or, or wherever that um, that you are able to to do this the way you would like to do it and and follow state law. Can you share that with the council and share that with the uh, the city attorney? I guess I would like to resolve that because it sounds like that's what it comes down to. You feel that it's legal for you to do it that way city attorney doesn't I would like to figure out how to sort that out somehow because it seems like sure. it seems odd to me that we could have gotten this far and then for that to be uh, the roadblock that killed the entire deal see Sam let me make a suggestion if mr. Shafi would like to and we we've talked this through but if if the request is I think it'd be appropriate to ask uh, mr. Shafi to to uh, present a paper to the city attorney's office, and then we can have the city attorney office review it and come back with an opinion. Does that make well, sense, or, we or may whatever need you? To, if if you could submit, and we may need to hire, we may need to ask outside counsel to look at it, especially if if the city uh, if if the city is interested in simply going with the with the other firm. If the administration has decided that already six months ago that they would like to go with the other firm. And maybe we need to have a fair and independent appraisal by outside counsel, so we know what, we know whether or not your proposal is legally viable. I would like to make sure we have an independent uh, opinion because it seems to me that we have a foregone conclusion that the previous presenter will get the deal. Thank you, Annie. Did you have a response? <laughs> I have a copy of the state statute, and it is clear that it allows a public corporation to do a design bid, regardless if it is, I don't know if it, it does not say if it is owned by, if it is going to transfer ownership later on, on or not. You know, I, I don't really know what the ramifications would be. That was not brought up to me before, so I really would not be able to answer that. I have not checked with my legal counsel as far as, you know, the transfer of ownership after it is built. I know it is to protect the tax. I mean, the whole goal of the bidding process is actually to protect the taxpayers and make sure that everybody has a fair chance on building the project. By, do, by giving you that opportunity to bid my portion with yours as a design build is similar to you bidding it following the bidding process. The bidding process and the design build is no different. They're both allowed by the state statute. I'm giving you the authority to do it on my behalf you know, and I'm uh, uh, having you immune from any responsibility as far as liability, you know, so as far as that goes, you know, in my opinion, you know, I'm not a, lo a lawyer, but I'm sure, you know, if a court looks at it or somebody looks at it, it makes a lot of sense. But, you know, and I have copies of the state statute. You could, you're more than welcome to look at it too. Thank okay. you. Very good. Let's go to all the women. Karen Olson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I thought tonight I was going to get an opportunity to listen to several proposals, and I think um, the issues that are being discussed now are related to some legal issues and not relevant to these presentations, and so I would urge just that we move forward and listen to the additional proposals. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Council Members. I have copies of the presentation. Uh, I'll pass them all along so you folks could take a look at yeah. it. Thank you. Very good. I think, you know, just for a point of clarification, because there's been a few comments as far as, you know, how, how did we get to this point as far as this meeting? I want to make it very clear that uh, I think it was about a month ago I was approached uh, by Brian Vulcan in the, in the folks from Legacy Land, 
uh, that they had an interest in, in trying to revitalize or to resurrect the proposal down there. And since that time, I know that Mr. Shafi has been well aware of the fact that, uh, uh, that someone else was interested because I also had those conversations with Mr. Shafi. I didn't share exactly who it was. And I think it's very important that everybody understands that if we proceed with a public-private partnership, it will be done with uh, the utmost transparency and, uh, and every and all questions as far as how we got to this point will freely be talked about. Uh, I don't want there to be any misimpression uh, that somehow that one group or another had been in contact with me or anyone in the staff for a number of months. That just is not the case. So thank you, everyone. Mike, were you going to add anything? We're just about out of time. Oh, you're, oh, you're taking the computer down. Okay. Why don't we... <laughs> Let's take a short break again so we can allow the third presenter uh, the opportunity to set up and we'll be back there again. I think we'll use the same timeline in about 15 minutes and then we'll take that up because it's been running about 45 minutes per presenter between the presentation and the questions. Thank you. Everyone, Rob, you ready to go? Um, thanks, if you would identify, identify yourself for the record, please. I'm Rob Schlemgen with Schlemgen Design Consultants and Architect. Uh, honorable Mayor and distinguished council members, I appreciate the opportunity to be here and discuss this with you. Uh, two and a half years ago, our group, the Presidential Plaza Design Group, gave a presentation to the Downtown Revitalization Committee. Uh, we really thought in our presentations to that committee that all the presenters in that committee were going to be given the opportunity to come to City Council. It was represented that way, and so it's a pleasure to be here two and a half years later. I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate that you're looking to improve downtown Rapid City. I think it's, it's something that's important to the community, and we look forward to being a party to that. We looked forward to it two and a half years ago, too. Um, and, and we had a project somewhat similar to uh, the previous presenters. There's some subtle differences. Those of you that were on that committee may or may not have recognized those differences. Uh, but before I go into that, I want to mention that, that our development committee involved mechanical, electrical, structural, and civil engineering companies. Tonight with me here is Steve Malone from Malone Engineering, who is now a mechanical and electrical firm, and Jim Didier, who uh, Jim was the previous owner of the Alex Johnson Hotel, along with his family. Um, and, and Jim was our basically our financial guru, if you will. Uh, a number of our other committee or committee members couldn't be here tonight. Some of them are out of town. Some of them have moved on to other things, actually. So uh, we're still a core group, but uh, with some potential changes down the road. Um, I'm going to try to make this presentation very short because we're not ready to prepare. We're not ready to present quite. Uh, Quite honestly, I made the big mistake of opening Saturday's mail Monday morning, and in there was the letter talking about the potential for being here tonight. And so I missed two days of hard work I could have done for a presentation. But um, our presentation is put away and filed, and, and uh, I was impressed how Hanny brought his presentation forward so quickly, uh, but I wasn't able to do that. And I apologize to the committee. In the letter that I, that I received an open Monday, uh, it indicated that future times might be made for actual presentations. So I'm here to request that. Um, I'm going to put a picture up on the screen. This is the project that, that we presented two and a half years ago. Uh, this, this project is real. Uh, it's not an artist's conception. We have plans. We have sections through the building. Uh, we spent about $50,000 developing this project, and uh, we we're very proud of it. We think it's exactly what Rapid City needs. It incorporates commercial for retail space. It incorporates offices. It incorporates a huge amount of living space, and it incorporates a large amount of public and private parking. Uh, we, at two and a half years ago when we brought this project forward, we did not and were not able to identify our funding source, and we believe almost solely that that's the reason at that time that we were looked upon as maybe the second choice. 
uh, we, we heard from a lot of people who saw this project that it was an incredible project relative to its ability to revitalize Rapid City, its ability to historically fit within downtown Rapid City, and to do everything that Rapid City needed at a time it needed it. However, we were not able to tell the committee that specifically wanted to know who is going to fund this project and how are you going to fund it. We had a number of sources online that were very interested and willing to invest in this project, but we needed a commitment like the other gentlemen have indicated tonight. We needed a commitment before those investors were going to step forward. Um, we invested approximately $50,000 in our proposal to the Downtown Revitalization Committee in our presentation works in making sure we were showing you a drawing that was not an artist's conception, but in fact a real building that was really buildable. We've got structural drawings that ensure this building can be created and do what the downtown Rapid City needs. Uh, there's nothing, uh, nothing that isn't real about this project. However, that's about as far as we can go tonight. Um, we can show you this picture of it. We could go through our previous numbers. We didn't think two and a half years later to pull our project out of the file and dust it off considering the economic challenges that the city and the state and the nation are facing. <coughs> our approach to how this project would be funded might be completely different than what it was two and a half years ago. Uh, a number of things are in place. Uh, Mr. Shaffey did a good job of getting the TIF in place with the city. There, there's a number of things to work with that we would approach how we would go about this differently today than we would two and a half years ago. However, what you're seeing on the screen is the project that Rapid City needs downtown. There needs to be people living downtown to bring life to downtown, not just parking, not just more commercial space. And we think this project does that. Um, Mr. Malone might have a couple comments about what we went through, but that's the extent of my presentation tonight other than just uh, respectfully requesting that you get a chance to hear about our project if you desire. Thank you. Thank you. And if Mr. you don't Malone, mind, I, you, uh, I, Steve Malone uh, with Malone Engineering. I do just have a couple of comments. and. I don't know if you guys actually read the letter that was sent out, but I opened mine on Monday too. And uh, let me just, it would take me two seconds to read it. Attached, please find a press release regarding the special city council meeting being held on Wednesday, May 6th to hear proposals regarding the St. Joseph's Street parking ramp. At the city council work session held on Monday, April 27, 2009, the city council requested that staff contact the individuals involved in the original proposals for a public-private partnership for the construction of a parking ramp on the parking lot located at 6th Street and Main Street. The City Council requests that anyone interested in making a presentation contact the Rapid City Mayor's Office. The Council indicated that they would schedule additional meetings as needed to hear additional proposals. If you have any questions or, or are interested in presenting a proposal, please contact the Rapid City Mayor's Office directly at 394-4140. Okay. I got that letter on Monday, and, and we were part of this proposal process. Actually, three years ago, December 21st, is when 2006 is when we made a presentation also and uh, there was there was a uh, at least another one or two that, that did the same thing and right after that we were we were basically told that you know Hanny got the Hanny's was the project of choice which was fine he had he's, he's still got a good project I mean I'm, these guys got a good project everybody does because Rapid City needs that project but at that time we put it we put it away we put it away almost three years ago and said okay we got a couple of guys still around a couple of guys aren't gone um, we got the letter on Monday, or I got the letter, we start contacting the other. We haven't even got together to, to meet yet to decide, you know, what does this project end up, end up doing? What is our, what is our strategy going to be? Has the economy changed? Yes. Is it the same project? Probably not that it was three years ago. Hanny made some comment. His might change from ten stories to two stories to six stories. Ours might change the same thing. We have to go back through and, and redevelop the same things we did back three years ago. We had costs to you. We had, we had structural plans. We had drawings done at that time three years ago. We're, you know, we were doing it right, and uh, we'd like the opportunity to, to get together again and at least have the opportunity to try to do it right again with, with some real numbers and real, real things to try, to try to say, okay, this, is, this could be a real project. Ours could be a real project, and uh, all we're doing is asking for some time right now to say, okay, we haven't worked on this project in two and a half years. There's no need to. Hanny got the project. We accepted that. 
okay, now then all of a sudden this is this has come up and I've, I've heard a May 15th deadline and stuff and I look at it and say, you know, you guys, this has been three years ago when we made a presentation. Why, why do we need to hurry up and say, okay, next week we got to make a decision? Um, we can't have a, we can't have our team put back together in that time. We can't have a, a formal presentation. You know, Hanny did the job, pulled out a lot of his old stuff. We could, we got our old presentation. We could go through it. The numbers aren't right. The, you know, the team members have changed even a little bit because a couple of, a couple of team members aren't even business anymore. So. Uh, I guess all we're we're here right now, and I don't know if Jim wants to say something, but we're here tonight. Just say, like the letter states, and it doesn't even mention a, you know, the 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 part about is this really a a partnership with with a residential on it? Do we run retail? This, the letter just says for a for a parking ramp. That's all it says in the in the letter. You know, before we had some criteria that we went by and said, okay, part of the criteria was you wanted to revitalize downtown was prevent was to accommodate some people living down there. That was one way to revitalize downtown. There was a, a list of things in the last proposal or whatever that everybody went to. We put our, our proposals together based on that RFP that was sent out. In, in this situation, it just seems like we're, we're, we're all throwing at something. And one of the things that we, may, we would ask of you guys is, is what are you guys, what are you guys, what are you as a city council looking for the corner? If all you're looking for is parking, well then use your own money and, and you got the parking and you're done with the parking. We got that part done. We could have done that three years ago. Okay, you guys could have built a parking ramp. Okay, there's ways to fund that. And Brewer has left tonight, but he's, he's presented ways to fund parking ramps. Okay, if, if the idea is that we want to revitalize downtown, then it's more than just a parking ramp project that we're talking about. It's a parking ramp, it's, it's the retail, and it's the, you know, it's the office building stuff, and, and it's, it's the people living down there. You know, people, I've been to big cities. I got the opportunity to hand me to go to Chicago for the first time this winter. And I went, I went downtown, I know what you're talking about, I had a blast. I mean, downtown at night, it starts coming alive. Uh, 7th Street Project that uh, Brian's kind of behind there, that, that really helps downtown. Okay, that's ways to get people downtown, get people living there, get people working there, uh, bring people downtown. I just bought an office building downtown. I'm on the edge of it, but I, I, and I love it. You know, I, I want to be down there. So I'm part of downtown, and I whatever you guys end up presenting or, or picking, Make the project go ahead. I mean, let's get this project going ahead so we can go to the next step because downtown Rap City needs that corner filled with something, some fun. And I think that bring a lot to, to what's going on down there. So I guess I, I'd open it up to, you want to say something, Jim? Yeah. My name is Jim Didier. I'm the uh, business finance consultant on the group. And uh, as most of you really probably are aware of me most as uh, recently as the former owner of the Alex Johnson Hotel. And I've had the uh, ability and I guess the uh, honor of serving as a custodian of the hotel for a number of years has had some of my family members before me. So I'm very aware of the situation that exists downtown. I've been a part of it and uh, I want to continue to be a part of it. And as my previous uh, uh, two associates have said uh, prior uh, in their comments that uh, I was aware of the uh, the letter as well on Monday morning. So we just uh, want to put together some more, uh, somewhat more of a, a firm plan as to what is involved now, not what was involved two to two and a half years ago. And uh, we want to do this right in, in, the, in, a, in the right way, not just put something together to be, to be heard, but uh, we want to put some viable plan forward. And we respectfully request uh, the time to do so. Thank you very much. Rob, was there anybody else that would like to speak? You want to recap? Thanks, Mayor and Council. No, I don't even want to recap because I'd just be doing it a fourth time. Thank you for your time. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we have a couple lights here. Just, just point of clarification. Um, there was a request to send out letters, but just you know, there was a press release that was sent out on the 28th, which uh, there were uh, coverage by every r TV station and the news, it was actually uh, in the newspaper again. So the other thing I wanna make a point of is the fact that you referred to a, a May 15th deadline. That didn't come from this council, it didn't come from the mayor. That was, that was a comment that was made by one of the other presenters. So let me assure everybody, there is no deadline. The council will take as much time as they feel is appropriate uh, to look at all the proposals. Okay, with that, let's go to Alderwoman Karen Olson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would urge my colleagues that we um, allow 
other presentations. I'd be happy to set a time, set aside, set some time to do a similar ac activity this tonight um, for a pre full presentation for those who are interested in making um, that presentation. Um, I believe um, that the help, that, that the positive thing that will emerge out of that is um, that everyone in the community is going to understand that we are once again considering a serious proposal for um, downtown. So I would say, I don't know whether this is two weeks or whether we need 30 days in which to allow everyone to come forward with whatever that they need to, to present to us in terms of financing and any other issues that they think are pertinent. Um, I would like to clarify that while the original, the discussion that took place two and a half years ago did include residential, those of you who participated probably remember that at least one of the proposals didn't include any retail space in it. So it wasn't a requirement, never was. But on the other hand, we were looking for the best possible solution to um, providing downtown Rapid City with um, good parking and the other kinds of amenities that you as folks in the business community could envision, um, could appropriately put to be put together in a way that benefited the city, but also was financially viable for those who were investing. So Mr. Mayor, would it be possible to suggest a time frame for this? Um, do, do you think 30 days is a, is a reasonable t um, time to set another um, meeting like this in which people can bring forward information to us? Um, they should certainly alert um, the mayor's office that that is happening. I regret for those of you that already had a timely presentation, but bear in mind in terms of the city conducting business, um, I don't think it benefits anyone to um, have even the slightest appearance that the process wasn't fair and open. So. Um, whatever the, um, I think the perception needs to be there that this everyone had an opportunity to participate. So I can understand those who have came forward this evening with what they viewed as something positive and, and fairly complete and with some people um, involved. But for those, just think that the transparency that's involved and the fairness issue is important. So my proposal would be that we come back for 30 days and allow others who have a presentation to make that. And I think I would at least, as a council member, be happy to sit, th listen to those proposals and be prepared to ask questions. Tim, yep, very good. Did you, you want, want a motion? Is this a night for we can make motions? No. I don't think so. <laughs> we stated that at the beginning, I we really can't make motions. Right, uh, so that I think then the appropriate step would be to bring this forward to um, our next council meeting. Sure, I'd put on legal and finance, okay. we'll go through that. Thank you. Yes, Rob, you had a question? Yes, that comment. Sure. Thank you. Um, for us, we're, we're looking as uh, Mr. Shaffey and Dream Design was looking at it, about a $50 million project. One of the, the downfalls to our presentation the last time, plus two and a half years ago, was we were not able to identify specifically our funding sources with names and, and uh, places of where that was. We'd, we'd need more than 30 days to line up our financers. And, and we're gonna have to go to our financers, the investment bankers, the insurance companies that we talked to in the past. And, and as we all know, the economic times have changed and whether we can re, reinvigorate them or revitalize those connections, I don't know. But I can almost assure you that in 30 days, I for one can't put together $50 million for a project that we don't know if we have the land for or not. Um, because I don't know if our project or, or, or Forefronts or Dream Designs will be the winner. But what we have to tell them is, if you like what you see here, and if you're willing to come on board, then as time goes and when we are given the green light, we inject your funds to this project. But we can't do that in 30 days, uh, I can almost assure you. Rob, let me ask you the obvious question. Do you have the ability to line up investors uh, prior to a commitment by the city? Um, that's something that Jim would have to work on and, and, and that's a difficult thing. When we presented, I'm gonna give you a little bit of history about that. When we presented to the uh, development committee two and a half years ago, we asked, we put $50,000 of our money towards the design of this building and towards creating something that was appropriate for downtown. We asked the city to put $50,000 as the number hits the nail on the head for the study to make sure that we had the right project for downtown Rapid City. Um, that was critical to everyone, um, to the last taxpayer of Rapid City who was involved with this project because of, the, because of all the tax implications. 
So we wanted to know the project was correct, but that was really frowned upon by the city that we would ask for money to be spent to, to confirm that we had the right project. So um, the answer to your question is probably so. We probably would need a commitment, but times have changed. And right now, in my opinion, we're, we're at the bottom of a swing and people are looking for things to do and looking for new projects. I might be surprised that we might find people to commit without that. I'm, I'm gonna go to council, but I, I just, I wanna make sure to follow up on this. I, I guess my question though is, is, is the fact that if you're saying that you really need a commitment by the, from the city before you can really go out and get those investors interested in it, it almost it almost uh, uh, suggests that uh, you're stating that we actually have to select one of the proposals so that they can go out and theref therefore get the investment. Am I, I did I misread that? Please help me out if I mis if I misinterpreted that. I can get investors interested in our project as as certainly can my competitors, shown by the fact there's developers here tonight. But to get a signature on a line that says, I'm gonna commit my funds to this project before we have land to put it on, I think is gonna be very difficult for us. And Jim, you'd be, I mean, Jim's the one for us that dealt with those kind of things. Okay. That's what we understood. So the answer would be yes. Okay, very good. I'm gonna to go to the council here. Thank you for the indulgence. So it's Alderman Sam Quaker. <coughs> Mr. Schlemgen, how much time do you need? I'm sorry? What, how much time do you need, minimum time frame? We, we thought 60 days was a minimum and, and reasonable. Okay. I think that, I think it would be, um, apparently we're, Jason, we're not allowed to offer motions tonight to set another meeting. I, I think uh, if, we, if we have a, another meeting in 60 days and then we allow, because there may be other, other people that are also interested given the fact that the, there's only a week's uh, notice uh, on this, so uh, I think that uh, 60 days would be uh, appropriate, and I would support having another meeting in 60 in, in 60 days. Thank you. Let's go to Alderwoman Deb Hadcock. Just a couple of things. You asked um, what we want. It seems like um, Hanny's and um, the legacy both kind of summed it up: provide attractive housing in the downtown Rapid City, provide for improved commercial activities in downtown, provide additional off-street parking. Um, that kind of sums it up. And where you go with that is up to you. I mean, that is your design. That that's what we kind of are looking at. I think as a city council, what's the best feasible project? I told Legacy the same thing. What's the business plan? I mean, in 30 days, you should be able, or even 60 days or 45 days, I don't know what that might be. But um, most people know in 30 days, um, kind of a conceptual issue if this project for them is even gonna move forward. Where it goes from that for funding, the city is committed to giving a TIF and 2.8 million. So I think we are having a funding source and we are helping those projects in a way that starts them off um, forgetting people that would want to be in with your project. How you go from there, some people are soon doing the CDEs and some other stuff, um, same thing. Um, the business plan, how you're funding it, and who comes up with that best idea um, is, is where the city goes. If, that, if you guys come up with the building that you had before and they come up with something different and we pick theirs, it's just one of those things. So. Um, you design what you think would work best in that spot and be um, the most viable for our downtown area or for that downtown space. I guess that's what I would do if I was in this business plan, if that's what you guys were thinking. Anyway, um, for time limit, I don't know. Um, just a couple of things. I had heard tonight the CDEs, which is the Community Development Equity, um, they need some type of commitment in, in some of these projects that are gonna make the difference for them getting those CDEs before somebody else takes it. So council, we also gotta think about that when we're making decisions of 30 days, 60 days, some other things that are going out front here. So I don't know how we do this to get to the solution, but it seems like it's in 30 days, you should have somewhat of a conceptual plan or some type of business plan where you know where you're going, maybe not funding sources and all that, and then go from there. But. Um, I'm ready to listen to the council where they're going from there, but um, you kind of wanted to know what we wanted. I think that was pretty much in the criteria the first time, and then 
Um, if the city's committed, of course we are. We, the city council um, was with Hanny Shaffey had put up TIF 62 and $2.8 million. So, and your community decided the 2.8. So we do need parking downtown. Thank you. Let's go to Alderman Lloyd LaCroix. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to thank everybody for coming out tonight and presenting each part of what they, they, their vision for a rapid city can be and wants to be. And, and I think the council is all on board and, and wants uh, parking ramp and, and housing and, and revitalized downtown. And I think in no way, shape or form do we really want to hold, hold that up in any way. I've heard tonight, you know, that uh, we can't move forward with a feasible study without a commitment. Well, I think you can. You're seeing two firms here invest in their in their dreams and their vision. I, I think you can do the same. Um, and I, I and I I agree. We need the more time to be able to, to give a fair shake to everybody. Thank you. Yep. Additional comments. Uh, procedurally, let me ask a question. Does anybody else? Well, again, let, let's just check and see if there's additional comments. Is it, um, now both of you have talked. I'm gonna, is, there, <laughs> is, is there anyone that wishes to speak before Alder, Alderwoman Hadcock and, and Alderman Quaker speak for the second time? If so, turn on your light. Okay, very good. If not, let's go. Did you want? No, you can, at this point, we can ask anybody questions. So let's go to Alderman Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, I had a question for Mr. Vulcan, so thank you, Rod. Presentation. Brian, you, you talked about the feasibility, and, and I didn't understand that that you needed a 100% uh, go ahead to, to start the feasibility study. I thought I understood it as you needed the opportunity to visit with staff or, or work with staff, and I didn't know what kind of kind of time commitments that would take from staff. So I didn't know if that required 100%. Um, well, um, I, I think I can address that. Um, there's a lot of been a lot of uh, twists and turns and a number of things said. I want to make a couple of things clear. First of all, we're not asking in our feasibility study. We're not asking the city to contribute any money to that. We, we intend to go out and and do that. There's a basic problem. You can, you can you can't start with a design. You can't build build something, expect people to come, and then try and force the business model to fit it. You've got to start with the business model and the need, and then sit down and have meaning, meaningful dialogue to come up with that design. Now, any one of these, these guys are good, we're, we're good. Anybody can come up with th those good designs. Uh, well, most people can anyway. But you have to have meaningful dialogue about what all the stakeholders want. So what I think was what happened in the past, and, and, and I'm not you know, saying anything bad about their approach. They started out and they and you spent all this money and time on a design that may or may not work, and then you find you can't make the business model work. We're proposing something different. What we're proposing is that we sit down and, and we come up with that business model and come up with shared values for this facility. Whether it's adding residential, less commercial, or sustainable design, historical design, all that can be worked out. Mm -hmm. But it has to fit a business model and it has to work. Now we can continue to kick this can down the road another 30 days, 60 days, and, and, and that's fine. We, you know, we, we need to be patient. I understand it takes time in the public uh, venue to, to make those decisions. But understand too, if you keep, keep kicking it down the road, we're going to miss some really tremendous opportunities. And I'm not trying to rush you. Don't don't get me wrong. We need to do this right, and I want everybody to vet vet their ideas. But on the other hand, it has been two and a half years for a number of other people so we, to, to bring something forward. And I think it was last fall when when the one firm dropped out that it was actually published in the paper. And I, and I, I can't remember which one of you said. It. I think it was you, Mayor. I'm not I'm not uh -oh. quoting you on this that said, hey, we're going to look for other opportunities there. And that's when we started thinking. We said, well, what are those opportunities? And, you know, what, all we did is bring a proposal forward. We said, we want to present this. Now, I... Brian, I not, understand. I don't want to cut you off. Mayor. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, sir. My main thing is the feasibility part of it. I mean, it seemed like that was a very 
uh, important piece for you, obviously. And, and trying to get us to sit up here and try to make a business model for any one of you engineers is crazy. And, and I mean, right. we don't understand even where you're even going or you're going to finance it and how it's going to cash flow and all those types of things. So I agree with you on that. But the feasibility part of it, that's the part I'm not understanding. Is it something that has to be, I mean, are you, were I, I you requesting we some staff that. time or were you, or you're saying we well, you want an approval so I can do the feasibility? I you guess know, we, we, we can do our own feasibility study. In mm -hmm. fact, we, we have done a lot of the initial work. Okay. But until we have that meaningful discussion and sitting down, what do you really want? What's going to work for the lawyers? What's going to work for the engineers? What's going to work for historic preservation? We can't get there. And that's going to right. rack up a lot of money and a lot of time. Okay, and okay. it's just unfair to ask a number of firms to do that. Okay, I understand. Okay, that's the part I just didn't okay. get. So uh, I just, you know, I'm obviously concerned about the time frames, but I want to. I want to allow the, the process to work for everybody. And I don't think that all of us up here are going to come up with some kind of design that works for everybody. I think that's what you guys are good at, and that's and you're going to invest your, your money into it. So I think that that's important. So I'm not sure that 60 days is not going to kill your project. Uh, and I think, uh, I mean. I, I'm not sure either, but it's not going to do it any good. Right, I understand that part. That's my <laughs> part of my concern, I, yeah. I agree. Um, so. I guess that was the main question I had for you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to Alderman, Alderwoman Deb Hadcock. Um, just, I was just thinking about this. If this project was um, decided not, no, um, decided not to be done in the fall, doesn't that open it up to anybody who wants to do the project and could have started at any time knowing TIF 56 that this council did not dissolve it and it, it kept open because we decided maybe that this project could be feasible? So at any time, and this just came to me, that um, TIF 62 was open, so anybody at any time, even not being sent a letter, I'd have jumped on that as a business plan, number one. And number two, um, we also cr committed to 2.8 from 2012, so I'd have jumped on that too. So actually, Hanny, what you did when you dropped it is you set it up for anybody in this community <laughs> to come up and say, I want to do this project. So. To say it was this and that, and these guys were six months ahead, um, that's also opportunity that they took into consideration from somebody dropping a project. Not that they were trying to set something up or do anything behind or do anything bad. I'll just say it like that. It, it's they took an opportunity, and now they're setting forth to, to make that opportunity happen. And now at this point, we have to be fair. So we're setting it up, and we sent you letters. Um, how long that goes, I don't know, but these guys are six months ahead because they thought of a good business plan and decided to move this forward. Um, that's commendable. It's not something that you should be kind of mad about. It sounds like some people weren't in the know, but again, this project was dropped in the fall. So to be fair, if they are six months ahead and they've got a few things on going on you, that's probably what's happening here. So when we're trying to say that, you know, we're not being fair on this project. I think we are. These people just took opportunity to um, get ahead. So where we go from here, I don't know. But again, I think for opportunity, um, it opens op up opportunity because they also been looking for six months since it's been dropped for um, funding sources. And they found some funding sources, so they are ahead of some people here. Um, how do we resolve this and how do we make it go after this um, again? I don't know the process from here, but um, I just thought I'd throw that out there to people that um, kind of feel like that they're behind on the process a bit. Okay, thank you. Let's go to Alderman Sam Quaker. Thank you, Mayor. I think it's important to make it very clear so that there's no misunderstanding and so that the uh, that there isn't there isn't the perception that the City Council is unduly delaying this. I mean, let's be clear. The, the notice for this meeting for the request for proposals was sent out a week ago. And that is not fair, absolutely not fair, to expect a huge presentation to be prepared within a couple of days. I'd like to think, based on the discussion that I've heard, that we're all in agreement that a, another 60 days um, is appropriate. And if we had to do it over again, which we cannot turn back the hands of time, but if we had to do it over again, a notice should have been sent out in December, a series of public hearings should have been held rather than to, uh, rather than to have um, 
you know, behind the scenes discussions with one friend. Thank you. Okay, thank you. There again, point of clarification. I think I've been in contact with every single one of these firms prior to this meeting. So um, the reason we're having this meeting tonight was the fact that I was approached by Legacy Land um, 30 days ago. Does that sound about right? And the first thing my, my I, think, if I, think, I think I can state this verbatim is the fact that you need to take this in front of the council. And we need to give anybody else the opportunity to present at the same time. That's why we're here tonight. Um, I, have, I have no objection whatsoever to taking additional time, but I just want to set the record straight uh, that uh, in my mind, uh, no one had any kind of a advantage in this process. Uh, if anything, um, I try to give everybody as much. I know uh, I specifically talked with Hanny Shaffey almost a month ago. Um, I did not receive any additional interest, and there again, it was very public that um, that TIF 60, or 62 was out there, and uh, when I was approached by two different firms, I started looking at setting up dates, and I, I, I talked about that a couple different times at, at the council level, so. But I appreciate it, and uh, um, there again, let me state the, the obvious. As we move forward from here, um, we will give everybody equal opportunity. Uh, we will do it in a uh, extraordinarily transparent way. But some of the things that I wrote down, and I, I think it's very fair to ask all those that are going to present to this council, is whatever the timeline is, whether it's 30 or 60 days, I think that they need to have a formal presentation in writing with some basic questions that are answered. Uh, number one, uh, what is what is the concept as far as, and most of you already know where you're going, parking, uh, residential, and commercial. I think everyone's there. The other thing is, and, th and this is I think the city's interest, is how many stalls are we going to get for city use at what cost? That is a determining factor because of the fact if, if with our investment, which is I see it as $2.8 million plus whatever revenue that we can get from the TIF plus the land, how many stalls does the city of Rapid City get? And I think that's going to be one of the determining factors. Uh, the other thing is, is I think uh, whatever that date said is I, I think that you need to take that opportunity and try to identify potential funding sources. Because in my mind, you have to weigh the financial viability of the project. If you can't finance it, you can't move. Why, why would the city of Rapid City commit to a project if they don't have financing in place and have the ability to move forward with it. So I think that is a, a very, inc uh, very important part of the entire package. You have, to be you have to be able to identify that you have the financial wherewithal to move forward with the project. Because if you can't demonstrate that, in my mind, that does uh, basically put you, in essence, second or third tier. If someone else can demonstrate that they have the financial wherewithal to do it, you bet. I, th I think they, ha they are gonna raise to the top along with the statement, how much is the city going to get out of this? Because it has to be a partnership. You know, I, I can tell you what it costs for the city of Rapid City to build a parking stall, eighteen to $20,000. I know how much money we have. I know how much that equates to. We can basically on our own go out and build a parking ramp, uh, put in about an additional 150 uh, parking stalls, and do it ourselves. So the question is, there's your threshold. What can you do above that threshold? And, and that's a challenge for each one of you. Uh, the other thing, and I think it's also fair, is to uh, identify, uh, try and identify those funding sources. I think there again, we talk about transparency. Who's going to do the funding? If you're going to use tax credits, that's fine. Identify all those. And it, the other thing I think is very important is TIFs. I assume that everyone is going to try and utilize those TIFs. Now keep in mind those TIFs, the TIF is already in place, and there's specific criteria of what you can use that money for. Are you going to come in, are you going to ask for amendments to that TIF, or are you going to leave it as is? Because currently the TIF can be used for a couple of things, basically for, uh, I believe it's mitigation of contaminated soil and also moving the utilities, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's, in essence, what the TIF was designed for. If you're going to expand the TIF, we need to know that. So, I mean, I think that gives you somewhat of an outline of what you need to propose. You need to come forward with a, with a package, and if it's 40 or 30 to 60 days, that's fine, but... I also expect anybody who comes forward from this point forward, they have to understand they need to get in the game now and 60 days from now, we can't have someone else coming in saying, oh, I haven't had the opportunity, I need another 30 days or I haven't had the opportunity. Well, there's the notice. That's what you need to bring 
as far as a package for the city council will determine that. Um, I see this as being a fairly straightforward decision. What's best for the city and for downtown? So I'll get off my soapbox now. Sorry about that. And well, well, let me just, in all fairness, I, I took a little bit of leeway. Is there anybody else that wants to speak after, after that diatribe? Let's go to Alderman Sam Quaker. Move to adjourn. Motion passes. Thank you, everyone.